Hey everyone, welcome to the Web3 Center, where we are mastering the art of NFTs. Every episode, myself and Madame Love, we have a new special guest to speak about a skill set within the industry. If you like this stuff, throw us a like, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you keep up to date with all the juicy content we drop. And we're back, and we're back. We're good, we're good to go. Ah, oh, what a great start to episode 20. This is all about Twitter spaces. They love to really put the pressure on us. That was, <laughs> that, I got rubbed, so if anyone missed my intro, I am pumped for today. We have an amazing guest on. This is episode 20. We've been doing this for about, oh, what, no, that three, coming up three months now. And this has been amazing. Just like the old days when we first started, we lost our first guest halfway through. We almost lost the show at the get-go. But we're back. Everyone is here. Um, and how are you today, Madame Love? I see you requested because obviously we'll get you up here. And then we'll introduce our special guest. Welcome, everyone. It's awesome having you guys here. It's a pleasure, as always, to have all our regulars here. I'm just looking down the list, and as the room fills up, sorry for that slight interference, but how are you, Madame Love? So relieved that it's not just me. <laughs> um, but no, I'm fantastic. I'm flying high. It's been a fantastic week, and I know that we're just all going to bounce off Doc's energy today. Um, so without further ado, I'd love to say hello, Doc Pease. How are you? Hello, greetings, greetings, everyone. So happy to be here. I'm doing so well. Today has been a really nice day. Started off with some yoga and then went right on to my work day, checking some boxes off. And now I get to connect with you and this incredible community. Beautiful. Now, I first noticed you, um, I think it was one of Tree of Life's documentaries of a real life event um, over there in the States. And I just I kind of saw you, and, and I don't know if we, if we got to hear uh, you speak, but you were just so exuberant. Like, you you literally shine gold. I know you've kind of done your branding around this, and um, I'm curious to hear more about, you know, the, the history of you. But we're not going to forget this week. We ask this question for everyone, and uh, we'd love to know who your sensei is, either in Web3, real life, or both. I love this question, who my sensei is. I would have to say that my sensei has been for some time now, someone who perhaps people in this community might recognize this name. Um, I've known her for about five to six years now. We were in a woman's group together for about five of those years. And she introduced me to the Web3 space about a year or so ago. And she asked me this question, do you trust me? And I said, well, yes, of course I trust you. Um, because she helped me pivot my career from working at a doctor of pharmacy to coaching and speaking. And because of that, we had created such a strong bond. And that individual, her name is Lauren Turton. So I'm curious to know if there's any community members who recognize that name. She's the host of Freedom with NFT's podcast. And she's a dear friend of mine. We do a lot of traveling together. We MC events together and we're each other's ride or dies. That's incredible. Yeah, she's an incredible lady. We've actually got her on next week to talk about um, onboarding. So, yeah, it, it, it's been amazing to line both of you ladies up. It's, it's exciting for me as well um, to see such powerhouses of women make so much change. And, yes, her name has come up a few times in our spaces. Wonderful, wonderful and to I, hear, and not and I, surprised in the least. I love that you touched on like what you were doing before this. This is a big reason why I wanted to start these shows, and and I asked uh, Kyra to come join me to host these shows because for me, I was a plumber by trade, and I have pivoted my career into Web three uh, as well as e commerce businesses as well. So to hear a story that you've also done something similar, you've completely pivoted career, is one of the reasons why we do these shows to show that you can have any sort of background. But if you make the right moves, you make the right people, and you and you and you put the work in, you can completely change your career in this up and in up and coming industry. So I love that we briefly touched on that, and it's um it's awesome that you found someone that you that is your sensei and that you work with, and sounds like he's a very good friend as well, which is what we're all about. Yes, most definitely, we've created st quite a strong bond, and I think that that's very important to have someone like that in the space. Someone that you can trust, someone that you can lean on when you need to, someone that you can 
ask questions too openly, even if it's quote unquote silly questions, someone that could experience things with you and navigate the space. And I think that's such a blessing to have Lauren Turton as my sensei. And I hope that for everyone else that they can connect with someone in that in that way. Yeah, I wouldn't um I wouldn't be half half where I am, I think, without the support of Miss Jo. And I wish she was in here because I wanted to do a big um public shout out for her birthday. But she's not in here today. Um, but, yeah, no, it, it's lovely to have uh, good friends and I hope that people have more than just one. Obviously, you have your ride or die, but it's all about having a big community and a big network through here. Um, and it's something that I love how it happens so easily and naturally as well, especially if, you know, you're you're being your honest, true self, then you're going to naturally get those people around you. Um, yep. So can you – sorry. Can you talk a little bit about it? That's what I wanted to say. You attract what you exude, so you, you're going to attract that tribe based off your energy. Yes, 100%. Um, so can you talk a little bit about, like, who you were before this? What were you doing? You're a doctor, right? Yes, I am indeed a doctor of pharmacy. I obtained my licensure from UCSD, University of California, San Diego, after attending the school for about nine years, obtaining my bachelor's of, of biology, doctorate of pharmacy, and then also completed residency at the UCSD system, hospital system. And then after working in the space as a pharmacist for about half a decade, I was working in formulary management, fire authorization, and essentially behind the scenes of pharmacy. No, but no one would ever see me uh, working as a pharmacist. I was always doing the behind the scenes tech work um, in the management arena of pharmacy. And after doing so for about half a decade, I realized I wasn't really in full alignment with my purpose. And this actually goes, the story goes hand in hand with the creation of this acronym GOLD. It's the reason why I wear GOLD, because GOLD is an, is an acronym that I discovered during this time where I was searching for something that was more in alignment with my, what I felt was my purpose, because I wasn't in alignment back then. And so the story actually of me discovering this acronym was back in 2015, I believe. I was sitting in the, at this family wedding, dressed in this beautiful gold sequin dress. You know, weddings are an occasion where everyone's showing their best face, showing off essentially. And I felt like I was, you know, showing off that I was a successful pharmacist, especially to my family. You know, you care so much about what your family thinks of you. And so I drove up in my nice car wearing this beautiful, luxurious dress. And if you followed me on socials, you knew that I was, you know, a pretty social person. I had good friends. I had everything seemed great. And as I was sitting at this wedding, I felt that I was playing this role and I forgot the lines. And I realized I had this sudden light bulb moment and this voice said, you need not just to wear gold, you need to be gold, a genuine, original, loving dreamer. And that really shook me to the core because I realized, wow, I am not authentically expressing all of my true self. I'm only expressing one dimension of who I am, which is the, the smart intellectual being that I was told that I needed to, to be to be successful. And I wasn't expressing any of my creativity. And so it was that moment that I had this shift and I was like, what else could I offer? What else am I gifted in? What else could I do that at least makes me feel that I'm more in alignment? And that's when I started discovering and realizing or reminding myself, I think many of us have to remind ourselves of who we truly are. And I reminded myself that I was a spoken word artist. I wrote a book when I was 12 years old that was poetically inspiring. It rhymed and it had Van Gogh inspired art. And I did this when I was 12. And I was told at the time 
by my Nigerian parents and my Nigerian family members that, yeah, that's great that you wrote this book, but artists don't make any money. Mm. You need to become an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer, someone who can make consistent money. And so at that age, I said, okay, well, I love helping people. So I'm going to become a pharmacist. Um, Well, a doctor, but I don't like blood. So I became a pharmacist. And so, and so I went down this path that I felt that it would make me happy. And it did for some time, but it also wasn't in full alignment with what I feel my purpose is, which is to inspire and empower others to creatively express because for so long that was subdued. And now that I'm more creatively expressing, I feel like I'm more embodying who I truly am and I'm becoming more and more gold as I as I go or as I like to say as I flow and that is why I wear gold because it's not just a color that looks great um, or a reminder that you know there's money on the table or there's money to be made it's more of a embodiment of who we truly are whether we know it or know it yet or not we are all gold we're genuine original loving dreamer and sometimes it takes either somebody sharing their story that you relate to or or it takes a a light bulb moment like i had or sometimes it takes a semi semi devastating type of moment in your life for you to be to for you to be shaken from this redundant just day by day living life. I think so, I think a lot of people in society, like listening in today and people in Web3 can definitely relate to your story and relate to the fact that we are kind of going against society norms. Like we grow up with this, we're taught this way of life to to do, like you said, you've got to go earn the money. You've got to have that big career. That's, that's what you have to do. That's what your family wants. In a lot of the world, people are taught that way and we get ingrained in it in our culture. Um, so I know that like for myself and everyone, a lot of people listening today, we are either trying to kick society norms and go down a path that is could, to some people laughed at or not agreed with by, oh, what is this stupid? So a lot of people can easily relate to what you have done. You've done it in a very big way and very quickly. And I know a few people listening today would be like on the fence and getting closer and closer to doing it as well. Um, but at least they're making that, they're, they're seeing the connection, they're seeing the possibilities. Um, so yeah, that's, it's, it's like awesome to hear that that's exactly what you've done. Um, I'm very inspired by that. And I hope that myself and, and other people listening and get inspired as well, because that's what it's all about. Like we, we are growing together and there is so much opportunity. And we, once you start seeing outside of what everyone else wants you to do outside of what the masses want you to do, that's when all the opportunity starts to flow. And I, I fully and truly believe that deep down in my, in my soul and my heart. And, and I just wanted to like move on to like, how did you get into the speaking then? Was this like, you, you're you're now doing a lot of speaking and you speak very well. Like we've just heard you speak then. You you speak very, very well. Like, is this something you always want to do? Or is this something that just came by like, oh, okay, well, I really love doing this. I'm now going to start. And it just came naturally. Or is this something you've had to work on? Because with a podcast, you have to be able to hold a conversation. You've got to speak very well. And you obviously do that and you're very empowering. So is this something you had to teach yourself or is it something that came naturally? Oh, I love this question because, again, it really stems from the fact that you have to remind yourself what you're capable of. And many, many people may actually be surprised to know that I was very shy growing up as a kid. In fact, my favorite place in the world was underneath the bed. And I'm not saying that (laughs) it's that's not a bragging moment. That is actually the opposite. Um, And literally, when I was growing up, 10, 12, up to probably before I even went to, right before I went to high school, I would literally be underneath the bed and my family would be looking for me and they'd be like, oh, peace, she's underneath the bed again because I felt safe. And I just, I just got really comfortable with just being there with my books and, and my collections of rocks and whatever. And I felt like I had nothing to say or, and I did not need to be seen. And that was it. That was it. And it took some time for me to kind of get out of that shell and 
it took a, a few mentors growing up, my basketball coach um, and other mentors that I've had to really bring me out of my shell and really show me that I did have something to offer. And this goes to show that perhaps you might need to rely on someone else's belief in you before you have that belief in yourself. And with that being said, this is why I'm so passionate about uploading up your own empowerment tool chest and, and being able to rely on your own self-empowerment because for so long, that wasn't the case. And so to answer your question, how I've shifted from what I was doing back then at working as a pharmacist to what I do now, you said something about how this happened fairly quickly. And I, I do want to clarify that this has been a work in progress for many years. There, were, there was about a two-year overlap between me working as a pharmacist and me honing my skill set as a spoken word artist. After I had this realization back in 2015, 2016 at this family wedding, I started tapping more into this spoken word artistry and I started writing poetry. And I have to say the very first one I wrote, it rhymed, but it, you know, it wasn't spoken word. It was something else altogether. It was like a mixture of rap and I don't know what. So it was a work in progress for me to develop the skill set. And it took me about two years before I landed my first paid speaking gig. In fact, I was working, I was flowing regularly for about a year um, doing open mic nights. And then after I did a bunch of open mic nights, one a month, I told myself I was going to write and perform a new spoken word flow every month as long as inspiration flowed. And I did that for about a year every month for an entire year performing at a local San Diego open mic night. And after I honed that skill set, then I said, you know what? I need to take this outside of this open mic setting. This is too good. There's so much talent in these open mics. Like I want, I, I want to inspire everyone to, to branch off and really share their gifts elsewhere. And this is a great place to practice. But what next? And so for me, what next was pitching a bunch of events. I went on Eventbrite, looked up a hundred, over a hundred different events that were taking place in my city. And I started outreaching, cold outreaching to every single one of them. And about a handful of people responded and about three of them said, yes, come on on, come on, speak at my event for free, of course. And so after doing this for free at open mic settings, spoken word, and then I shifted to doing this spoken word events for free, again, for an, another entire year, honing this skill set and speaking at schools, organizations, corporate spaces, bars, everywhere I could think of. I was performing at these events to grow my brand and to grow and to really hone this skill set. And so when you say that this happens fairly quickly, this has been a work in progress for years. It took me two years to finally get from performing my first spoken word flow at an open mic to getting paid to perform spoken word. And then when I shifted and became a uh, coach, this actually happened because after speaking and starting a, a fairly successful speaking brand, when I finally started to get paid for speaking, COVID happened and things shut down. And I realized that in-person events was not going to be happening as consistently as they once were. So I shifted to virtual speaking engagements and speaking virtually. And that wasn't as popping as the IRL. The energy isn't the same when you're, when you're virtual as when you're speaking IRL. And I started to think, because I was able to create a relatively successful virtual or online based business and pivot my speaking brand and make it more of an online brand and find success in that, perhaps I can support other providers like myself, other pharmacists, doctors, nurses who aren't fully fulfilled to help them tap into their creative expression and to package that expertise and that creativity as an online offer. And so I started working as a coach in that way. 
And I supported many clients in doing so and creating an, an online based offer, packaging their expertise into a high ticket offer specifically so that they can generate additional revenue streams or even pivot themselves into another career, one that in which they felt more fulfilled. And it took me six months, if not longer, to develop out that coaching coaching program. So many, so many months of, of redefining and reassessing and figuring out what it is that people wanted support with and how to provide that support, along with so many, so many other coaches that I work with to dial that all in. So again, it's a, it was always a work in progress. And it was about a two, two year overlap of me working as a pharmacist and me build starting to build the speaking brand. And when I decided that I was going to shift fully and leave pharmacy, it actually came as a gift. I never needed to make the ultimatum. I never needed to put in my resume. It actually came in a massive layoff of my company that my company had. And so it was a these nine words that I heard that day back in 2019 was Dr. Peace Uche, we have to let you go. Dr. Peace Uche, we have to let you go. And at that time, when I first heard the words, I was like in shock. I was like, okay, what am I going to do now? I had this moment where I forgot that I was building something up, my own business and my own brand. And when I realized, when I remembered that, you know, like this wasn't even an alignment. And now this is an opportunity for me to finally pivot to be more in alignment. And I, and after about 30 minutes of crying my eyes out and calling my mom and just bawling about like this disappointment that I felt in that moment, I snapped out of it and went straight home, changed into my bikini and went play beach volleyball on the beach for the rest of the day. And then that next week, I went right back into building my business. Absolutely. I think um, you've you've covered a few really good life lessons in there to make your own opportunities and seek them out and um, patience and hard work and dedication and, and having, you know, perspective. Yes, things can happen really quickly in this space if you're in the right place, the right time, you know, the right people. Um, but for the most of us, it could be, you know, a decent, solid journey. And even then, you know, so many things can change and the space changes that you might end up somewhere completely different. Um, you also said something before about, you know, with this high ticket thing that you were doing before these podcasts now, that it was important to kind of work out what people actually needed to empower. And I think it ties in with like, with your podcast, how do you decide on what subjects, what people to bring in, what's going to help people. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I would love to go into that, but real briefly, how I pivoted and even got into the Web3 space, that would happen about a year or so ago. And that was when my fr my good friend, Lauren Turton, asked, do you trust me? And I said, yes, of course I do. And that's when I invested in those in two dozen of Gary V's newest book, the pre-order of um, what is it? The 13, 13 and a, 12 and a half, 12 and a half. And when I made that investment and knew that I was going to be awarded with NFTs, I said, okay, what the heck is an NFT? And I started doing my research and I started listening to other podcasts that existed. I started listening to YouTube and jumping into Twitter spaces and doing my due diligence, my research. And when I realized that the space was a space that was supportive of creative expression, not just acknowledged it, but super supported it, I said, okay, well, this is a space I want to explore. And at the time, I had a radio show. I had a radio show for about a year or so, and I was featuring creatives that are in the San Diego area. It was a local radio show. And I said, you know what? I don't want to just feature any creative. I want to feature only NFT creatives. And so I started bringing on NFT creatives, those who I was connecting with in the Web3 space. And I was like so happy to use this platform that I already had, this massive platform, to feature NFT creatives because I got to learn from them. And everyone else who was listening 
on the radio waves, we're able to hear from them as well. And that's when I I was really like amped um, because I was connecting with so many incredible, incredible beings. And after about a few months of that, I established my radio show as the very first radio show to feature only NFT creatives. The radio station decided that it was a little bit too controversial at the time, the idea of NFTs, and decided that they didn't want to have that on the radio waves. And so I decided to pivot once again and start my podcast. That way I was in control. And I could feature anyone I wanted to. And so that's when the podcast was birthed. And I changed the name of Golden from Golden Sessions with Doc Peace, the, the original name of the, of the radio show, to Golden Meta Sessions with Doc Peace to indicate that we were featuring those in the Web3 space. I love that how you, um, how you, this is kind of how I started my career as well in NFTs, like getting other people on to speak to and you you get to learn as you're teaching other people so once again with this show like that's something that we like to do like i know a fair, a fair amount in this space but i'm always constantly wanting to learn and i'm open to ideas and i always want to speak to new people like yourself like the guests we have on every show there's not a single show that goes by that i don't pick up something else that will help me on my journey or will help other educate other people and i think like it sounds like you had the same sort of thing you had people coming on you didn't know too much about NFTs, but by having these people on, you got to not only introduce them and share their stories, but you got to take a little bit from them each time and you're taking it, growing and you're growing. And now you got to the point where now I'm assuming, and I, I'm, from how you speak, I'm assuming your knowledge is, is quite detailed in the NFT space. And this is all because you had the opportunity and put yourself out there to meet new people and, and speak and introduce and become friends and network. And that's what to me is all about. It's all hugely about networking. Um, and yeah, obviously podcasts, Anyone can start a podcast, but to successfully run a podcast and have interesting people on there is the challenge. That is the challenge. So I, I applaud yes. you for, for all your work. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to pop in and start listening. So I, 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 haven't, I haven't personally listened to – I've listened to a snippets, but I haven't listened to a full one. So I'm going to have to come in and start catching up. I'm assuming they're, they're a bit off, off different times to the Australian time zone. Or when do, you, when do you normally hold these for the listeners that might want to listen in? Yeah, so these podcasts are pre-recorded. They're pre-recorded content, and we distribute one to two episodes every Thursday, we, where we drop them at 6 a.m. on Thursdays. And some of the individuals that we've been able to bring on have been those who are experts in the Web3 space, of course. Um, they share with us how to stake crypto, so DeFi-related topics as well. Um, because that's all part of the system. Mm -hmm. And most of the focus, though, is on creativity, creativity, creative expression, NFT creatives who are building something really unique, um, who are utilizing the technology to integrate their expertise and their gifts and their talents and what really lights them up to facilitate that. And so it's interesting to know how they're building, like for example, David Bianchi, he's a another spoken word artist in the space. He is, um, dare I say, my, the male, leading male spoken word artist of Web3. And I like to say, I like to think that I'm the female lead uh, spoken word artist of the Web3 space. So he's my male counterpart in, in that regard. And so we have, we had him come on for the first episode of season two, and he shared how he's building this massive spoken word empire um, and how he's pushing out these cinemas, the spoken word cinemas, and what how he was able to incorporate his acting career and production abilities to create these cinemas, these spoken word cinemas. And so it's it's just so very interesting to see how people utilize their background to build what it is they want to see in the space because it's still so fairly new. No one else is doing something like that. And so GM with Doc Peace podcast is all about sharing these these stories, how these NFT creatives have pivoted and any doses of inspiration that they want to share in terms of tips and strategies so that our listeners could really 
give themselves permission to find and achieve their own version of success in Web3, not duplicate what that what they see and the success that they see in, in what others are building, but really take the time to really assess what it is that they can achieve and what, what is it they can build with their unique set of gifts, skill sets, and talents. For, for just, just quickly, for, for me, like, um, I love podcasts and I like doing these sort of shows and I, and I will eventually pivot towards more podcasts in the future because it's something I really enjoy. And I love the fact that it's speaking, you're real, you're real. It's as real as you can be. It's one-on-one. You're, you're not editing it. You're literally meeting the person. You're showing your personality. You can't hide it. People will see you out if you have, if you're trying to play a game or try to put on a, a facade at, people will catch you out on it. So you have to be real. And, and that's what I, it's, I, I really believe in with people, um, integrity and, and, and being true to yourself and being true to your friends. And so for me, and I wanted to ask the question, like what is it about podcasts that you love? Is, is that, are you on the same sort of boat? Is that what, why you love it? Or is there other reasons why you love doing these podcasts over like radio, for example? Yeah, so the reason why I love the podcast is like Brett, what you said. It's about being able to feature others and utilize your platform as a way to elevate what they're doing and what they're building. It's also a way for you to learn and have direct access to that content. Plus, it's also a very business mindset type of strategy. Firstly, because of you, because you have this platform, you now have a means to outreach someone who is may be considered at, at a higher level than you. And you have uh, a reason for them to give you their time and energy because you have this platform built out that can allow them to share what they're doing, what they're building one to hundreds or one to thousands versus one to one. They're not just sitting with me and having a one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of people don't have time for that once they get to a certain level. Now they're sitting with me and it's like one to many that they're reaching from my podcast and from my, the community that I built around my podcast. And not only that, it also gives you an opportunity to establish an additional revenue stream. So that's where we get to the conversation around sponsorships. Sponsorships are huge and it allows you to connect with another company or another brand who wants to have marketing opportunities and can look at you as a source for that marketing opportunity. And so for myself personally, for season two of Golden Meta Sessions with Dog Peas podcast, we were able to get sponsorship from Radio Kaka or Raka. They were the top sponsor of NFTLA. They sponsored NFTLA with half a million dollars. And we connected back in February of this year at a conference called East Denver. And we hit it off and we had a follow-up call um, after East Denver. So this is another very important note um, is to follow up. And I remember suggesting or at least discussing my podcast and how we are welcoming sponsorship, op sponsorship opportunities for seat to begin recording season two, because at the time I already had season one all dialed in. We had completed that season. And and then we had, it was after the second follow-up meeting where we met IRL here in San Diego because she was in town. And, and then it was that evening that she decided, she was like, okay, let's do it. Let's let, I'm going to sponsor your show. I believe in it. And so that's how that sponsorship opportunity came about. And this just goes to show, again, not just following up, but making it clear that you're looking for, making it clear what it is you're looking for. Because at East Denver, the reason why I was able to connect with her was because East Denver was unlike any other conference that I've been at. Usually these conferences are many different companies and brands trying to sell you something. They're trying to put you onto their project. They're trying to get you to mint their, mint their NFT collection, which is fine. East Denver was different. East Denver had many massive brands that were looking to either give you a job, that were looking to partner with you, who were looking to bring you on in some way or another onto their team to help them grow. They were actually looking to collaborate. And so when I realized that, 
me and my partner in crime, Lauren Turin, when we realized this piece of vital information, we just we hit up every single booth at Eat Denver and we introduced ourselves and gave the entire spiel of who we are. My spiel goes something like this. Greetings, I'm Dr. P. Suche, also known as Doc Peace. I'm a doctor by trade, spoken word artist at heart, and I am the host of Golden Meta Sessions with Doc Peace podcast where we feature NFT creatives. Currently, we are looking for marketing opportunities in terms of sponsorships. Are you and your company welcoming marketing opportunities? And we got, I got resounding yeses all around. Every single person I connected with said, yes, we're looking for marketing opportunities. Here's a number you can call. Here's an email. Here, here, here's a, here's a website collected all these emails because emails are the way to go when you're connecting with someone who you really want to make sure you follow up with. So collected all these emails and then followed up with each and every one of them. And that's how I was able to land my current sponsor of season two of GM with Doc Peace podcast. I think that's so interesting. Um, and you've really got to like, that's such a crystal clear pitch as well. It's, I don't know if it's just you as a person, the way that you speak, but it's so fluent. Um, but especially in these situations where you are, it's boom, 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 you're meeting people consistently. Uh, I think that's such a, a fantastic way to kind of, to, to position yourself. You sound, uh, it sounds like you're also taking a bit of like an authoritarian approach with it as well. You're strong. Um, and I'm not surprised at all that you had the response that you had. I think it's definitely um, a leaf that a lot of people I know for myself, when I go to these uh, IRL events, I don't necessarily have that sort of thing in mind. And it's, it's definitely given me, um, this is probably my tidbit of the, of the lesson. Um, but with, with approaching big people, because um, you were talking before about, you know, and I think we relate as well. We've had lots of guests in here that we wouldn't necessarily always speak to sometimes or are so much further down the line. And I also saw that you have a little snippet with Gary V, but I realized that maybe that's because you got in a little bit early and you had a bit of branding points with him. Um, but with approaching big players, like what, what's the best way to go about it? Um, how do you, yeah, how do you approach them? Yeah, so again, it really comes, comes down to knowing what you want and going after it. And the connection that I've had or been building with Gary V has been a connection that's been since I've been in the space. Honestly, he's the one who brought me in. I pre-ordered his books, but he didn't know who I was. And after about a few months of researching and doing my due diligence, I had the opportunity to attend NFT NYC. And this was back in November of last year. And because I had my radio show still at that time, I hadn't pivoted into a podcast. I was able to use that access, that um, media access, to obtain a media partnership with NFT NYC. So I had media passes to this event. Even though it was my very first one off the bat, I had this official media pass. And I bought a separate ticket to attend a satellite event called NFT Land Blast Off to New York City. And at this event, Gary Vee was speaking along with Jimmy McNellis. And we got there very, very early. And when, when I say we, I'm talking again about my partner in crime, my Web3 sensei, Lauren Turton. We got there early and we positioned ourselves and we were ready to go. We positioned we, we, um, she has a background in event management, Lauren does. And so she identified who the event coordinator was, brought her over and we convinced her that I needed to perform this a spoken word flow, my first ever web three focused spoken word flow. And I needed to perform it that day. See, I had written this spoken word flow about three or so weeks prior and I memorized it on the plane ride over. It's called Freedom with NFTs. It's actually based off the title of Lauren's podcast, Freedom with NFTs. And it shows my story of how I was finally becoming free now that I was in the space. And I knew that those 
in attendance would could relate to that, finally finding freedom in the space. And so we convinced her that I needed to perform this flow. And she said, okay, why don't you close it out? It would be the perfect close to this event. And so that's why I ended up closing out Gary V's event back in November with spoken word uh, and, and debuting my first ever Web3 focused spoken word flow called Freedom with NFTs. And that began my journey in the space because from there on, because I had that platform and because Gary V had retweeted me and saying I had tw tweeted something, well, let's backtrack to that very moment when I finished <laughs> doing spoken word. Um, he gave me a big kiss on the cheek, a big hug, and he whispers something in my ear. And and then Ja Rule comes up afterwards and he says how much he enjoyed my spoken word. And and then everyone, there was a uh, there was just a big uproar, a round of applause, and and everyone was just like vibing off this energy. And that's when I realized that I had something here with spoken word. And to answer your question, that's what kind of gave me that like, that boost, this credibility, this started to help build my brand in the space, because not only was I the host, was I going to soon become the host of this podcast, I had built, started building the brand of who I was as Doc Peace. And I think this is very important for anyone who is looking to either drop a brand, drop a project or drop an offer or drop like any type of platform to take the time to build your brand. Because if no one knows who you are, then it's going to be more difficult for you to connect and for you to sell your offer or whatever it is that you're seeking to do, take the time to build the brand. And that's exactly what I did after performing for Gary V and, and then getting more connections and more opportunities to perform and to collaborate. Um, we did a partnership with Fame Lady Squad and dropped the spoken word, a custom spoken word into every single Fame Lady Squad token holder of, of this project. So more and more people were able to become more and more familiar with me as a person. And so when I launched my podcast, and shifted into that space, people already kind of knew who I was. I was already someone who, who like, they recognize the name, whether they have connected with me directly, they, they kind of already kind of had this sense of like, oh, I've heard that name before. Wasn't she the girl who like closed out Gary's event? Um, or wasn't she the girl who is in my wallet? Like, because I'm a Fame Lady squad holder and I, I, I they airdrop me her, her likeness as an nft and so like people more and more people started clicking with um with me as as a individual and so that helped me with my outreach and so again going back to your question how do i outreach people that i want on my platform i just like having this brand is key but also if you don't have a strong brand built up or even if you do i rely a lot on third party connections. If I can identify someone who is a direct connect with who I want on the podcast, I will reach out to that person and ask them for a favor to warm connect me with who it is that I want to bring on the podcast. And it works. It works. And so that's a huge, a huge tip for everyone here listening today. If you're trying to connect with anyone, whether it's to get them on your podcast or to to collaborate with them in any way or to simply be their friend <laughs> and to learn from them and to to connect third party connections are gold reach out to a friend who has an individual as their first first connection and ask for a warm connect you've, you've spoken about it, i think multiple times in the show about how you your journey along, you've, you've learned things, you're building, and, and everyone, we toss around the word building all the time in this industry, but it's true. Like you, you could be like, I believe in coincidence, but like you can be put in, in front of the right people by coincidence. But if you don't have your, if you're not ready to speak to them or you're, you don't have the skill sets, like it doesn't work. And it goes the other way. You could have the best skill sets in the world. You could be able to speak to anyone and win them over, but if you can't get in front of them, then you're never going to be able to have the opportunity. So they, they come hand in hand. You've got to build your brand. You've got to build your skill sets. But you've also got to build that network so you can get in front and use them. Otherwise, they're wasted. So there's two, in my opinion, there's two big things that have to work together. 
to achieve what you're achieving and what um, people want to achieve in that way. So, yeah, we've you've spoken about multiple times. You build the skill set, but you build the network, build the connections, and then put them together, and that's when great things can happen. So yeah. I just wanted to touch back on that. Yes, and I don't believe in coincidences. I don't believe that it's luck that gives you these opportunities. I think that when you're in alignment and you're in a place that that energy just attracts that same energy that you were exuding and you receive these opportunities because you're open to receive them because you've been welcoming them and you're in that like energetic alignment with that welcoming like energy and you have this mindset that you you know what you're capable of and you you exude that energy of just empowerment and and knowing and when opportunities present themselves you're more readily to say yes i'm here for it let's go because alternatively if i would have attended that event with gary and I was not, if I had not been ready, if I did not spend four hours on a plane ride from San Diego to New York memorizing that flow, so I would be ready. Again, it goes to being ready before you need to be ready. So making sure that you're prepared. And then if I did not have that confidence built up, if I did not have my empowerment tool chest loaded up to remind myself what I'm capable of, then there's no way that I would have been like, okay, let's go. Because even in that moment, once she said, we're going to hand you the mic right after Gary V is done with his panel with Jimmy McNellis, and you're going to close it out. Right when she said that, my heart started racing, and I had to literally rely on my empowerment tool chest. Like, I pulled out a really powerful tool that's in this tool chest called an affirmation, and I said to myself, I received this opportunity, and I welcome the abundance to flow in and through me. I receive this opportunity and I welcome the, this abundance to flow in and through me. And I had to remind myself again that I was ready for this opportunity, that I had welcomed this opportunity. So let's go. And so that's a, another really good reminder that coincidences, coincidences and luck and all of that, like that doesn't really exist. It's putting yourself in a, in a, um, in a aligned opportunity and being ready to receive that flow of opportunities as they come if, if you're if you're not open for opportunities you won't see them you have to it's, it's like if your mind is not looking for them because you're not thinking about it they'll pass on by and that's yep. uh, that's a big thing that i also believe in as well is that once you start like getting involved in something and putting your heart and soul into something all of a sudden all these other opportunities start opening up because you're, you're, you're accepting, you're ready to accept it. Your mind is ready. It's looking out for them. So it's a, that's another big point you just touched on and uh, really well said as well. Um, I would like to actually, we, cause I know we've only going to have you for an hour today. So um, we've been going solidly. It's, it's been an absolute amazing space, but we do like just open it up to see if anyone had any questions. Do you mind if we open it up and see if anyone wants to ask a question today um, before you do, before we do uh, have to let you go. Um, so if anyone wants to, come and ask any questions regarding podcasts. Um, if you want to even ask Doc Peace a question in general, she's been speaking about a multiple field. Uh, oh, I just had a bit of a tongue tie there. She's been speaking about a multiple things today. Um, feel free to request and come up. But Madame, did you have any other questions that you really wanted to touch on before we, before we get to the more to the end of the show? Um, it feels kind of weird after, you know, I, I align with everything that you're saying and, it, and it's so beautiful and it's so true as well. Um, I know I've had a big shift in my mindset. A few things are cut rolling in now and it's just so exciting and I'm hearing what you're saying and I feel like I'm at the precipice potentially of that. But I want to kind of, you know, you know the setup that we're doing with this at the moment, running it through Twitter spaces and also got the Zoom for video. Um, and technology is... I feel like no one wants to listen to a podcast that's of poor quality and got a lot of white noise and all that sort of stuff. So I do want to kind of ground it up a little bit and find out, you know, some of the, the background with the tech side, um, what sort of setups would be recommended. Because it is something, podcast is something that anyone can do. Anyone can start doing at any point in time. Uh, and so I think this would be a great thing for beginners to touch on. Yes, I love this question because it 
ties to the importance of systems. Systems are so very important. And let's start from the first step. So if I want to have a guest on my podcast, the first thing that I do is to ask them if they're willing to be on my podcast um, or if they request to be on my podcast, if they reach out to me, I send them to a form. And on this form, it allows me to really digest who it is they are, especially if it's someone completely new. If I outreach to them, of course, I know who they are. And I might even bypass bypass this form in the, initially. But at least this is a solid place for me to send it, an individual to. And it, the form is actually on my website now. So in the beginning, I just, it was a form. It was a straight up form. And it had a little bit about the podcast and what to expect when you're on the podcast and how to prepare for the interview itself. And then it had a bunch of questions as to what they're, now it has like a question of what will your pivot moment is. Um, share your short bio, um, drop your headshot. Um, and it also asked them what upcoming events they're going to be at, because I'm also an MC and I'm a speaker. So I wanted to see if I can connect with them IRL at perhaps one of the upcoming uh, events that I'm emceeing or performing or speaking at. And so it, it really helps dial in and give me an overall picture of who they are. It has their Twitter handles that I collect as well, so that if we do move forward with booking them for an interview, I have all that information so that I can now tag them, for example, or create custom graphics for them based off the headshot that they they, um, they gave me. So it allows me to streamline this process so I'm not emailing them multiple times or they're not seeing the, the question in the email and they're, they're not responding and it's just getting lost. And it also allows me to share this contact, content with my team member, who is the one who's creating the graphics and who's uploading the podcast and, and uh, making sure that the, the bio is, is, is uploaded with that podcast content, along with the social media handles of those who are featured so that our listeners can connect with that individual and learn more about that individual by just reading the description. And so that's the first step is I, now I send them anyone who wants to be on my podcast to my website, goldenmeta.io. And there is a tab called collab with us. And in that tab, you can find this link. You click on the link, you fill out all these, this information. I get to understand who you are. And then from there, then I outreach back to you via email and say, I loved what you provided. Thanks for applying to be on the podcast. Um, please select a time that works best for us to record our content. And I give them a Calendly link. So again, there's two, there's now there's two tools. There's the Google form. And then now there's the Calendly link where they can select uh, an available time off my, my availability on my calendar. And so it blocks it in. And then it also sends them reminders so that they won't forget that we have scheduled a recording. And with this system, I never get anyone flaking on, flaking on me for po my podcast episodes because the reminders are an email the day prior um, and then an email an hour prior and then an, um, an email and a no notification like 10 minutes prior. So like I'm constantly reminding people like, okay, we have this interview set up, <laughs> please be there. And I've never had a no-show for a podcast interview with the system. And then it also, one thing that I've included more so recently was a checkbox that says that I could utilize this content. And it's like a legal, like a, it's in the legal um, wording to say that they're giving me permission to utilize this content and they understand that they're not gonna get compensated for me using this content. And I included that because it's good to be, to have that legal backing and to get that like official documentation that this this guest is, is okay with the, the distribution of their words in their likeness. And so I have included this legal checkbox not only on the Calendly form, but also on the Google form, two different steps. Because what I found is that sometimes people skip the Google form 
especially if it's someone that I really want to have on my podcast. I, I already know a lot about them and they have all their docs. I have all their information already. So to make it easier for them, I just send them a calendar link. And so I've included this like legal checkbox on both forms. And so on, on, on this, on both of these platforms, I make sure that it's very clear what to expect um, and also remind them to have a, uh, a, head, a headset or headphones or simple headphones because that blocks out a lot of the background noise. If they don't have a microphone, that's fine, but simple headphones really work. So remind them um, in the reminder messages that go out um, to make sure they have this ready to go. And, and then we hop on the call and the call is actually now on Riverside. I use a tool called Riverside now. I used to use Zoom, but now we use Riverside. Riverside is great because it downloads the audio separately. So it downloads the audio of my guest on their computer and then it uploads it to my computer. And then it downloads my audio separately on my computer so that we have two different audios. So if one audio is too low and one audio is too high, it's easy to, to, to correct that. Um, and then it also does screenshots throughout the interview because how often do we forget to do a screenshot for like BTS behind the scenes footage? It does screenshots for you and it tries to capture um, different shots where you are like animated or at least both smiling, which is kind of hard to do, but the system does it for you. And uh, let's see what else I like about Riverside. And even though it's a podcast, it captures, it's obviously on a video. So it captures the video content. So the, the audio we use and we push it out to our pod, all the podcasting platforms that we're on. We try to be on, I think we're on like all of the, the podcasting platforms. Or if you're on an iPhone or if you're on using Spotify, we're all like on all of them. Um, and it pushes, we push out the audio to all these platforms, but we use the the video content for marketing purposes specifically. And so you'll you'll see snippets like you probably saw, um, Chris, snippets of uh, the, the guests that we've had on the show via Instagram, our, our Instagram page, our Twitter page. And now we're gonna start distributing the content on YouTube or a uh, upcoming platform that, um, I don't want to dox the platform quite yet until it's out, but we're going to start distributing the video content on these other platforms to, to really, really build our community up even further. But that's essentially the systems that we use, the platforms that we're on. Let me know if I missed any, anything. If there's any other I, questions. I've, I've heard of, um, I heard of Riverside a while ago um, and I haven't, we haven't switched to it yet, but um. I just wanted to touch on something you were talking about how you all your content do you, do you save your content like to uh like to the cloud or something like this because this is something that i've had an issue with lately i had it all saved on a hard drive and i was planning on cutting little snippets out of all our little past interviews in the last 20 leading up to this show and i lost all the edited videos like i, I hadn't backed up my hard drive stupid of me um and now i'm like now i should be saving so i still have them all on youtube they're still there, but I did lose a couple of like the the downloaded Zoom. So with with Riverside, is this is this something that is it? What I wanted to touch on is it like, does it store externally on the cloud, or does it also is it an easy link for other people to join? Because one reason I stuck to Zoom for this time being was the fact that I was concerned about people not being uh, used to using Riverside, and everyone use everyone has Zoom or has used Zoom, so it's easy to connect with people. Um, is it is it just as easy to use? It's just as easy to use, if not better in a way, because not only does it, so Zoom, like you said, it stores the files to a, either an iCloud or it downloads it to your computer. But Riverside actually stores it to like an internet type of like cloud. Like it's not your own personal cloud, it's, it's, it's your profile, essentially. It stores it to your profile. And so, then after my I'm done interviewing that particular guest, I will message my team member and she will go in and pull and go into the rivers our Riverside profile 
And then she has direct access to everything, the audio, the video, the, the screenshots, all that, so that she can utilize all of that material. And it's very easily accessible. And so that's that's one of the reasons why I like Riverside. To answer your question about the if there's been any difficulties with people being kind of new to the platform, there's been some moments where like we had to give at least 10 minutes for us to do some troubleshooting. Riverside for some time wasn't working very well on the mobile. So we needed to, I needed to make sure that it was clear in the, when I would push out um, the interview, the invites and the information to my guests, I needed to remind them that ne they need to have access to a desktop. And I told them why, because the application we use works best on desktop, make sure you have your head headphones as well. So I gave them these reminders so that when the time came, we were all dialed in. And then to utilize the platform, it's just a simple link to my studio. And um, I saw something really interesting yesterday, actually, when I was on the Nifty Chicks podcast, they had a link. It was the Nifty Chicks forward slash record. And I'm pretty sure it's a hidden link on their website. And so when you go to the Nifty Chicks forward slash record, um, it will take you to their studio. And so I'm going to integrate something like that. Like it's going to be goldenmeta.io forward slash record or something like that. So that it takes my guests straight to my straight to the studio without having to type in this long URL. And then, so, as you can say, see, I'm all about like streamlining my processes, mm. processes, and creating systems around that because it just helps everything all around. No, that's that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you like mentioned that again because it is something that I I'll be honest, I put it on the back burner. I looked, I heard about it a long time ago, and I didn't go deeper into it. Um, while we're doing this, but now that we've got a little bit more time up our sleeve, um, I'm going to be have a, a good old look at that. But um, I won't leave Levitated. He's had his hand up for a long time now. His arm's probably about to fall off. So I know you've just been a bit sick recently. So I hope you're feeling better and I hope you're feeling healthy. But do you have a, a question for Doc Peace? Um, and because we're getting close to the end of the show now. I I, I do, man. And uh, don't mind me. I'm a little low energy, guys. I'm still in the hospital. But I figured. I got to meet opportunity where it stands. So, Doc Peace, um, if you would, um, give me the opportunity to fill out this Google form and maybe be able to come on the podcast, you know, tell yourself a little bit about who I am and, and what I do in the space. That would be amazing, right? Yes, but yes. Would love to um, would love to learn more about you and what you do. Right now, we had just finished recording season two, so we are going to be recording season three once we can secure sponsorship for season three. So I would love to explore having you on season three once that takes place and when sponsorship is secured. And I just want to wish you just some sending healing energy your way <laughs> and you hope you feel better soon um yeah, but for anyone <laughs> you're welcome for anyone who would like to be on my podcast especially you for thank you for coming up and and voicing that that desire you can go to goldenmeta.io that's g-o-l-d-e-n meta goldenmeta.io forward slash collab with us goldenmeta.io and you'll see a tab actually it's probably just easier to just go to the website goldenmeta.io and look for the tab that says collab with us and on in that tab you'll find the form to fill out and what happens when especially in between season the seasons we get a lot of people filling out this form i remember between season one and two we had about 40 people spill out the form to be on season two so i i i'm thinking that we're going to have something similar here so what happens is that then i'll go through um personally and review the responses and based off of the theme of that particular season that we decide what the theme will be and we usually decide it with tandem with the sponsor so um for example for season two who is radio kaka they are now leading the the drop of um what's his name 
I'm <laughs> blanking on his name right now. Um, but they're they're leading a massive NFT drop from a musician, and they um, we decided that the the theme was going to be around um, highlighting musicians and fashion designers and those who are building in the metaverse, and that definitely aligned with what I what lights me up. So um, that was who we were featuring predominantly in season two. So I'm excited to dial in our theme for season three and then to review all the forms and uh, and bring bring some incredible beings on and hopefully you're one of them. Uh, I'd love to just I'd love to just touch on it. We're getting very close to the end now. Do we have to, I have one more question. Can I sneak one more in there for you? Is that okay? <laughs> yes, it's fine. I, I want to know, like you've touched on a few you've touched on a few people, but we always like to like it's one I like to ask. Is there anyone that you're you've got your radar on? Is there anyone that you're you think that anyone in the audience should maybe uh, keep an eye on? I know you spoke to, uh, spoke about a couple of people, but anyone outside of those few people you mentioned earlier that you're really like, oh, I got to get to know this person, or I want to be involved with this person, or someone that you just generally are, are interested in because of what they're doing and what they're achieving. There are so many people that I have my eye on to be on my podcast. In fact, today I spent some time listing out who I would like to feature on my podcast. And keep in mind that these are like celebrities. However, like I want to feature a lot of my community members on my podcast as well. So I'm not seeking to just feature celebrities, but there were some incredible people that I've I've heard speak uh, specifically at VCon this past year um and i was like you know what i love what they have to say and i want to get to know them better um for example like pharrell williams um beeple was also present and we connected briefly at vcon so i would love to have him on um champ medici who is snoop dogg's son um i i love his energy and i'd like to have, bring him on along with snoop of course eva longoria also spoke at vcon i would love to to connect with her um, and there's some other incredible people like Jesse Itzler. Oh my God, he blew me away with his talk. In fact, right after he spoke at VCon, I went up to him and I introduced myself and it was very brief. And after he walked away, I said, no, I want to connect with this guy even more. So after about 20 or so minutes waiting for everyone else to be, get time to connect with him, I went up to him again and I said, said that I was a spoken word artist and I and he said show me what you got and so right then and there in the in the middle of this crowd I dropped this spoken word flow and and then it was it was incredible to see his expression and then afterwards on socials he was like that was the highlight of my day that like blew me away and it was just great to bond with him in that way and I would love to connect with him further because he really is like all about spoken word. And so we could have some really cool conversations about that and just his like en general energy. Um, Lisa Leslie was present as well. Um, and she's, you know, the queen of WNBA. Um, at, she was present at VCon and she spoke. I would love to connect with her further. Boss Beauties, Lisa Mayer. Um, she's doing some incredible things with the partnerships that she's been able to align with Boss Beauties. And how she's been able to empower women um, and and girls who are going to become very empower empowering impactful women because of the brand that she's built around Boss Beauties. So to answer your question, there are a lot of people I have my eye on, and this is just to name a few. However, there's also so many other people that aren't celebrities in my community that I've become um, aware of and. I would love to to connect with them as well, especially those who are creatively expressing in a unique way. That's again so very something I'm very passionate about, um, and it, again, it stems from me hiding my creativity for so long, and now I'm really curious to like connect with those and learn how they were able to to pivot their mindset. And then also pivot their career or pivot the direction that they were heading in their career to to begin to creatively express and in that unique way. We well, um I would love to keep this conversation going, but I know we've gone over our hour now and, and I, I do feel bad. So 
I, I have a couple of, I had one more request, but I'm not, I'm, I'm unfortunately, I'm not going to get them up today because we're getting a little bit over time. So project, I'm sorry, mate. I, you always come it's up. Okay. Um, it's okay. I, I don't, I want, I want to make sure that those who spent time with us today are able to get their questions. I, if that's what you feel, I'm more than happy to have the last question come up then. I just wanted, I didn't want to overstep our, our time limit. Um, I I'll, I'll get project up here then because unfortunately he, he always, he always asked to come up. And he always seems to miss, and now he's uh he's ducked away. Oh, he's he's ducked away. He's there. Project, if you wanted to come up and ask your question, feel free to come up quickly um, before we close out this show. Um, I know you always like to come up and say something, and you've missed a lot of opportunities in the past. So we'll get oh, Project up here, and thank you, thank you for being so kind to to extend the show a little bit longer. Yeah, you're so very welcome. A really good individual who does this so well that I saw him do it live was Tom Bayou. He spoke at VCon. Three hours later, he was still speaking to the attendees who had gathered around him, asked, and making sure that all their questions were answered. It was incredible to see, literally three, four hours later, he was still by the stage, just connecting with every single person and making sure that. every single question was answered. And that was a huge like realization and inspiration. I love that. I, I honestly, I could speak to you and everyone in this room all day. I, I, I just, I chat to anyone. I love it. I love it. I just can't, I, I, I love to keep talking. I love to learn. I love to listen. And uh, it's, I, I feel like I'd fit in really well at one of these events. I'd probably be there for 24 hours speaking to the same, same people or new people are coming up, but um, we'll be projects. Thanks for sticking around. Um, we've got you up here. You've been, please ask your question away and um, welcome to the stage. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm glad I actually made it up this time. Usually, I always end up catching the the uh, the end tail of the the game, but it's all good. I I just wanted to come here and show some love. But to Doc, I I wanted to just say, like I agree with everything that you're doing and you you're executing it marvelously. The most impactful thing that I took out of it was when you said that you also ask about the times that people, like when they're being interviewed by you, um, have had to pivot because that is a conversation that we don't have very often and it's, it is a conversation that is needed because a plan is never executed 100% every single time. There's going to be times that you're going to have to pivot completely out of left field just because of whatever situation that's out of your control so i love the fact that you brought that up that that was it it was not a question just wanted to give props thank you i'm so glad that that question resonates and to me it's it's true like you don't know what's going to happen as you're trying to achieve your quote unquote plan and I think many people think of it as they're trying to get to this final destination, not realizing that it's a journey. And on that journey, there's going to be moments where you have to make a decision, whether it's a decision that's been sitting on your heart for some time, or if it's a decision that someone makes for you. In any case, like everyone has these pivot moments, and it's important to, to, to learn from how others dealt with their pivot moments. So perhaps we can deal with our future pivot moment better because we're all going to have pivot moments. In fact, I haven't pivoted for the last time. I'm sure there's going to be another pivot that happens in my future and it's going to be I'm really excited to see what that is. Being ready for that moment when it comes is very important. You Being ready to pivot when you need to pivot is very important in my opinion. And I'm love, well, I'll pass over to you. Yeah, I just, um, with that, I was just going to say, uh, Doc Pace, it's been an absolute pleasure, first of all. Thank you for saying yes. And I hope that through sharing your story and educating others that um, you receive some beautiful opportunities and it helps push you further. Um, a special shout out to Annie Rogers in the room as well. Um, she's a new listener and she's posted that she wants to keep coming back and it's because of you know, sitting here and it just, it fills our cup so much to hear such beautiful feedback like that and that we are actually offering value to others. Um, I see projects put his hand up again um, and also big love to everyone in the room as well, new and old. We appreciate your support every, every single week. 
You're so very welcome. Thanks so very much for having me. I do want to say two things, if I may, before we close our space today. The first is I want to just make it very clear that having a podcast is a great tool to have. It can establish multiple revenue streams and it can lead to incredible things from connections to collaborations. I was able to partner with DCN Studios, their Web3 studio, 24 hour media channel in its infancy. And from there, I was able to attend VCon and interview so many guests at VCon and other countless events that are in our future. And because of having that podcast and being seen in that light, being able to interview and effectively articulate and to speak in that way and to highlight others in that way, I was able to obtain this partnership with DCN Studios. And not only that, but I'm also able to add to the value that I bring as an MC. And many events that hire me on as an MC know that I have the ability to moderate panels because of my podcast speaking abilities and my being a podcast host. And so that has allowed me to secure MC opportunities. And so having a podcast is, again, a great revenue stream. It's a great way to build community. It's a great opportunity to highlight others within the community and, and utilize this platform. It's a great way to obtain media um, media opportunities where you can attend these massive IRL events for free with the media pass. Not only are you in attendance as a free um a free attendee, but you have access to certain areas that not everyone has access to because you hold the media pass. And it also opens doors for collaboration. So having a podcast is great if you have the ability to speak, if you have the ability to articulate your questions, or if you're wanting to to learn this ability, because this has been something that I've been honing for a while now. So it is something that can be learned. If you have this desire to do so, a podcast is a great platform. If you're not wanting to speak and if you don't want to articulate your questions and to be kind of in the limelight in that way, you can you can leverage other media platforms like having a blog or a vlog or a blog. So you're not even seeing you're you're writing the material or you can create other social media content or collaborate with other large brands and companies who are looking for journalists and like writers. Uh, I remember I was petitioned to be a writer back when I first started. And I said, no, I'd rather have a podcast because I want to be seen and I want to be heard. And I'm, I'm no longer a 12 year old kid hiding underneath, underneath the bed. Like I actually want to share my voice and to be seen. And so I said no to that opportunity. But the point is there's opportunities like this that exist for you to leverage your creativity, for you to leverage your creative expression, to collaborate with others or to begin something new, like having your own podcast, your own blog, your own blog, your own your own content um, so that you can leverage others and, and begin to really build your brand. And so that was the first thing I wanted to say. The second thing is, we are welcoming sponsorship and marketing opportunities that are available on my podcast for season three of Golden Meta Sessions with Dog Peace. So if you know someone or if you have uh, a desire to obtain marketing, then let's connect and let's talk sponsorship. And for everyone here listening, I want to encourage everyone to listen to Golden Meta Sessions with Dog Peace podcast. We have, I believe, two more episodes that will be pushed out next week, uh, featuring some incredible beings, including Lealis NFT, and as well as someone who, uh, someone my whom you may find her name familiar, Amber Victoria. She's an incredible artist in the space who collaborated with so many like large scale. Uh, partners like Coinbase NFT, and she shared with us how she's able to form these collaborations, these large-scale collaborations, including with Instagram. She collaborated and did a takeover of, of Instagram's Twitter page, 
that has millions of followers and she took it over um, for for a thread. And so finding these collaborations are really key as well. And so she dials in on how she's able to partner and, and, and dial in these partnerships. So in any case, listen to Golden Meta Sessions with Dog Peace podcast and you can do so at goldenmeta.io. And I'll, um, I'll drop all these links a bit later for everyone as well. But uh, Project, uh, do you have one last thing before we end this show? Um, I want to end on a very nice note. I want to thank everyone. But Project, what did you have to say before we finish? First, let me just say I appreciate you once again. Um, and I just wanted to add to the pivoting thing because when you really think about it, even though at the time it might be a little bit of an inconvenience because it did not go according to your plan, your pivots more often than not are going to be an amazing opportunity to be able to grow and to do something special with that like that it, it's going to turn into something special before you know it and then you're going to be like wow it was actually a blessing in disguise yes yes so true an example that comes to mind real quick is when i attended a uh, it was an NFT event in LA that happened about a month or so ago. And I attended it with DCN to interview people who were in attendance, including perhaps get some time with Gary V, who was also going to be present. So we finally, after going through the line and we interviewed some pe- some really key people that were in the line and we finally get to the front of the line and we get this, this interview with Gary, the one that I think that you saw, um, Madame Love, and we get this interview with him and we don't, have the audio on the audio of the microphone is off and so all we do is get this this uh, we get the video captured but there's no audio and so mm-hmm. it wasn't until afterwards that i had this moment where it was like oh like what a fail and you know what i said to myself you know what i gotta pivot this mindset because not it's not just about physical pivoting it's mental pivoting that needs to happen too so I said, you know what, we got this opportunity and I'm going to make the most of this opportunity. So I spent hours reading his lips, going off of his mannerisms and just remembering what it is he said to the question that I had asked him, which was, how does a brand begin to monetize their business? Where do they start with creating a monetizable business as a brand? And he gave some really key ways, three ways, you know how Gary B is, three really succinct, really impactful ways and so i was able to put together the captions that now we are able to release the video content and even though there's no sound we're not able to put it on the podcast at least it sits as a vlog it sits as a video um on on other platforms like tiktok and so yeah that that's another example of of pivoting 100 percent. and 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 just to finish up i think we'll finish on, on this one Sometimes pivoting can be uncomfortable. Um, and a, a good, a, a, one of my favorite quotes is that imperfect action is better than perfect inaction. So if, if you're doing things and, and it's happening, like it, 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 it starts to occur, like at least you get started. Like you, you get started, you might pivot into something that you might not have known you were going to pivot into um, and you weren't ready for it. And we did say about be ready to pivot, but sometimes you, you, you don't have the opportunity, but just go with it, go with the flow. And you'll soon get better at doing what you're doing, or you'll soon improve on it. Like you said, you missed out on some audio, but you found a way. You thought, oh, well, we can still use this. And you found a way to add words to it and still actually use the content that would have been amazing content regardless. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what I want to finish on with that little quote. It's it's one that I like to use a little bit. And, and once again, thank you for everyone listening to the show. This is episode 20 today. We've, we've had an awesome 20 episodes. And I, I honestly, I couldn't have thought of a better, a better guest to speak about podcasts on our little space podcast that we have. It's been, you've been a world of information and knowledge. You've spoken beautifully. I, I can fully understand why you're so successful in your in your industry and pivoting into this industry over the years that you've done this. Um, thank you once again. Thank you for everyone that asked questions. Thank you for everyone that listened in. We'll see you next Friday or next Thursday evening for the people in the US, Friday mornings for the Australians. Um, and once again, Doc Peace, it was beautiful having you. Absolute pleasure. And, and I can't wait to meet up with you in real life one day when I make it over to, to your neck of the woods. And I'm, I'm sure, Madame Love, I might let you finish off since it, it was your beautiful guest that you've had on today. 
<laughs> yes, and I'm, I, yeah, I'm just so excited to continue on the flow. You have been so beautiful um, in everything that I, I knew you would be. And, and my humblest thank yous. And I also, too, would love to meet you at some point um, and continue this connection. But, yes, thank you, everyone. Um, really hope to see you next week to talk about onboarding. And I know that Lauren is a person like you that has many different talents. So I'm sure that we'll touch on lots of different uh, things that can, you know, add to, I don't know, people's understandings of, of just life in general, but thank you so much. Um, and we'll, yeah, we'll see you later and happy birthday, Miss Jo. <laughs> You're back in the room. Anyway, see you. Thank you again. I'm so glad that we connected through tree of life. That's another incredible episode oh. to listen for on the minute session with Doc P. So thank you again so much for having me and thank you everyone for coming in today. It's so great to connect with you all. Hope to uh, connect with you all further. See you thank later, guys. You. Thank you so much. Bye.